Welcome to yet another edition of Hot Hoops here via Q30 Sports on Q30 Television and Q30Television.com. John Alba here representing the Q30 Sports Basketball Beat Reporting Team. And today, joined by a very special guest, Samantha Guastella of the Quinnipiac Women's Basketball Team. So I think it's fitting. We're going to talk some women's basketball today. Sam, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate you being our first in-studio guest for this program. And, and those of you listening, you can't see her. But if you've gone to a Quinnipiac game, you know she can be quite loud on the court as well, <laughs> so you'll be able to hear her just fine. Uh, so, Sam, you're in a pretty good position right now, this Quinnipiac Bobcats team, 19-3, and 11-0 and yeah. uh, in conference play, 10-0 and at home. You guys are on the roll right now. Absolutely. How does this feel right now? It feels great. I mean, um, it's just really exciting. We've worked really hard, and I think it's all paying off, you know, little by little. Every year this team is a contender, and I always say it on, on my Twitter, death, taxes, <laughs> Trisha Fabry home wins. You guys don't lose in Hampton. It doesn't happen. And that's been such an instrumental part in you guys being at where you are in conference play right now. I mentioned 11-0. and 0. What is it about being at home that is just different from anything else? I mean, it's a level of comfort. We play there. You know, we practice every day. And... I mean, we love having our family there and, you know, our supporters and, you know, you look in the crowd and you see a camper that you coached for a summer and stuff like that. And it's just, it's a comfort level and we play really well together there. You guys have quite the set coming up. Uh, you've got Ryder, you've got Iona, you've got Maris. Mm -hmm. The MAC on the men's side has a lot of parity uh, and it's pretty much wide open for anyone to win. On the women's side, it's not as much that. There's, there's a very... Uh, upper echelon of teams, that upper tier. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys at 11 0, Marist at 10 2, Iona at 8 4, Fairfield at 8 4. How do you guys go about preparing against these t top tier teams? And I, I know I, we spoke to Trisha Fabry on this show earlier in the year, and she says you treat every game the same. But is that truly how you go about business? I mean, honestly, we do. Um, you know, we're playing Ryder first, and we don't, we don't look past anyone. And the last two days, we've had some really tough practices. and. You know, we have two, two teams. We have our first five, our second five. And, you know, they're arguably two of the best teams, you know, in our conference. And practicing against them every day is what gets us, you know, better to play these teams. Well, let's talk about those two teams. <laughs> now, as we heard on the Hot Hoops episode last week, which you all downloaded and listened to on Q30Television.com, <laughs> we're going with two names here. The name that everybody knows is the Gold Rush. That's right. the five in that, mm -hmm. that come in. But I've given you guys another label. That first rotation, that starting lineup, the old rush. <laughs> All seniors and a grad student. Val Driscoll, yourself, Jasmine Marr, Nikolai Ostergaard, and Boo Abshire. This unit is probably the strongest starting five in all the MAC, wouldn't you say? I mean, I'd agree. We talk about it often how we're a tough task to guard, and we don't just have one or two people that score. We have all five that you know, can exploit a defense. And the beauty of it for you guys is that your minutes are, are so spread out. And, mm -hmm. and you have this second unit, the gold rush, that comes right. in. And it's primarily underclassmen for the most part. What's the benefit of them getting all those minutes, too? I mean, just experience. That's, you know, I think what's made our class, our senior class, so great is we've had experience since our freshman year, really. And that's what's, you know, helped us get better through the years. And I think this will really help, really help them next year. we go back two years ago when, when your team uh, was running the Gold Rush when you were a sophomore. Right. And you're coming off that second line at that time for the most part. Yeah, yeah. What was that like? Like, like how does that differ from starting? I mean, it was different. Um, I mean, I did start a bit in the beginning right. mm -hmm. before my injury and everything. But um, coming off the bench, I mean, I liked it. I loved that. I feel like I had that spark, and it was, a, it was a big energy boost because, you know, you're playing hard the first five, and they're tired. They come out, and we come in, and it, I think my goal was always to not have a letdown, to not, you know, be worse than the first team and to really push a lead. Well, you guys did all right. You ended <laughs> up winning the NEC, yeah. undefeated in conference play, finished the season 30-3, and three, made the NCAA tournament for the first time in Quinnipiac basketball history, men's or women's. Right. Are you getting a lot of those same feelings this year? Yeah, I mean, we've said it since early in the season and we've had the same feelings. We've had, I remember sophomore year sitting down talking to Boo and Jazz and saying, and Nicoline and saying, you know, this is it. Like, we shouldn't lose a game in the conference. And sure enough, we didn't. And um, 
we were hungry, and I think that we have that same hunger that we did that sophomore year. Well, I got to ask you because this is a team, and, and I spoke to Fabry about this when mm -hmm. she was on the show. This is a team that shoots the ball a lot, yourself included. Right. You've, you've got no problem throwing up a three and at the same time being on the inside and, and throwing up a leg. Mm -hmm. A lot of versatility in that sense. But is there going to come a game when those shots aren't going to fall? Does that worry you guys at any point? Not really. I mean, I feel like when they, you know, if the shots don't fall or maybe the three's been taken away pretty hard, I think that we do a good job scoring in the inside. I think, I mean, even against Maris, I felt like I wasn't getting a lot of clean looks. And sure enough, you know, Val was in the inside, Nick was in the inside. And we, we really work well together and pass and see what's open. How'd that win against Maris feel? I mean, this is, there's a lot of history between these two teams. Dating back to when you guys were still in the NEC and uh, a lot of words being thrown around. Yeah. Uh, last season during the regular season, one loss was relatively close, the other wasn't really at all. Mm -hmm. And then obviously in the championship game, the second half didn't play out in your favor. Right. You finally pick up the victory at home in, in pretty dominating fashion for the most part. Yeah. How'd that feel? I mean, it felt great. You know, you, losing in the championship to anyone, you're going to have, I, I still think about it and I have nightmares of it. Like it was one of the worst feelings. So it was definitely a bit of redemption and we felt good. But I mean, I don't think we like, we didn't go in the locker room and have this crazy celebration. Like we're, you know, on a mission and we're taking each task. And that was just one of the tasks we had. I want to show some people the sense of humor, the vibrance <laughs> that you bring to the table because it's, it's infectious when you watch it on the court. And, and as I threw together a, a film two years ago, the gold rush to plug there, uh, you can check that out on the old Q30 YouTube, Q30 TV. Uh, there's, there's a certain aura to yourself, to the rest of the team. How, how does that come about? Because it's such a loose atmosphere with you guys, yeah. but then it's all business on the court. I mean, I've, I think that's how I've always played, and I think that's just, I didn't have to change to, to be like that. I mean, since I was a kid, I've just enjoyed playing, and that's, I mean, I remember when I was a little kid, and my dad always said, he was like, if I ever have to drag you out of bed and bring you to basketball practice, like, it's, maybe it's not for you, and I, I never did. I, like, every day, I absolutely loved it. So I think that's kind of what I try to bring in to every game, and, like, these are our last few experiences like this. Like, I keep thinking, like, you know, this is going to end. Is that crazy for you? It's, it's unreal. It, I, I don't, I can't even talk about it. I get choked up thinking about it, like, not, you know, just walking out on the court that we've been walking out for four years with my best friend. I see the water <laughs> starting in the eyes. Yeah. I won't push it. Yeah. I won't push it because okay. there's still plenty of games to play. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully you don't go back to be like, guys, on this Hot Hoops podcast, you should have seen what this game did to me. I don't want to <laughs> no, see that okay. happen uh, for the benefit of anyone. Um, some, some quick word association here. I'm, I'm going to throw something out and okay. I'm curious to see uh, what you say. Okay. And let's start with Val Driscoll. I mean, she's a beast inside. She's so tough to defend. And she really posts up well, and she's been great off the boards for us. Boo Abshire. Our rock. She just, I mean, never, never lets, down, lets us down. And she just, she's like our general out there. She has everything together. Jasmine Martin. Clutch. I mean, she hits shots when we need them, and she, she's a big scorer. She, she's really stepped her defense up this year, too, for Nick sure. Nick Crafty. The girl gets inside the lane like no one else. I mean, she just up and unders everybody, and her... Her poise. I've awesome. covered a lot of women's basketball games here <laughs> in my four years. And because I'm a senior too, don't yeah. forget. <laughs> I don't get teary eyed when I'm going on the court, but oh, yeah. nonetheless, <laughs> um, I've covered a lot of games here. And one that will always stand out is in sophomore year, uh, your sophomore season. Mm -hmm. Ostergaard has her Euro step, as, as yeah, a lot yeah, of people were yeah. And she actually got called on it. Uh, she got a travel <laughs> called on her. And you get up from the bench. And you, you look at the ref and you go. I remember. What, do you remember yeah, what I you do said? Exactly. Yeah, I believe I said she's from Europe, right? Yeah. She's from Europe. <laughs> she's allowed to get away with that. That's okay. Yeah. And, and you stood up and the entire That's bench so just stared at you like this. Yeah. And uh, I mean, people across <laughs> the, the arena could hear her say this. Yeah. One of my favorite moments know. covering yeah. basketball here <laughs> at Quinnipiac. Right. Um, Trisha Fabry. I mean, she's the best. I don't even. She's like our, our mom and our leader and just our motivator all in one. She believes in us and every single person on the team more than I think anyone actually believes in themselves. 
Then the last thing I got to ask is, you dressed up for her as Halloween. <laughs> I did. How'd that come about? And do you feel you did it justice? Because to me, it looked pretty good. I think I did. I mean, I've had multiple people, like cafeteria workers, a lot of different people, that have asked me if I'm her daughter. And I, they're always like, oh, are, really? you, are you Coach Fabrice? And I'm like, nope. Like, this is That's your... the other girl. This is year four, and there's actually... <laughs> she's on the team this year. And even I went to Jasmine Martin's sister's basketball game, and I had a lady come up to me and was like, um, are you Coach Saka? I was like... No, nope. no, I'm not. I'm actually your player. <laughs> so I think that was kind of, you know, funny. But. Uh, my last thing for you, I've got, and I, I, I did this to Jasmine Martin sophomore year when you guys were 18 and two uh, at, at the overall in the season, and you're 19 and three right now. Is this an NCAA tournament team? I think so, absolutely. I mean, I don't have any doubt in us getting to the tournament. Um, I think we just have to stay one game at a time and. I think it's more about us. I think we need to kind of forget about who we're playing sometimes and really just focus on executing, and I think we'll be, we'll be there for sure. Be there for <laughs> sure, whether it's in North Carolina, Princeton, Tacoma, Washington, wherever you end up. Right. Sam Guastella says that's where Quinnipiac is heading. Well, that's all the time we got here on this edition of Hot Hoop. Sam, thanks so much for hopping on the podcast today. Really appreciate it. And uh, your team's got quite the finish this season ahead, so enjoy your final uh, run here. And uh, again, thanks again. Thanks so much for having me. Well, as I said, that's all the time we got today. Uh, you can find out more about Q30 Television online at Q30Television.com and on Twitter at Q30 Sports and at Q30 Television. If for some reason you're interested in seeing what I have to say, <laughs> you can visit me on Twitter as well at John Alba SFC. You want to throw your Twitter out there or the team Twitter or something like that? Um, I think we have a women's basketball one. I'm not sure exactly. What it is. At QU underscore women's... WB ball. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. Some, something like that. If yeah. I didn't do that justice, I do apologize. Yeah, that's uh, but hey, that's all we got here today. We'll see you next time.